This video is brought to you by Simply Safe. More about them later in the video. What are the improvements for today's video, you might ask? Hey Alexa, shop on. I was sick and tired of having to turn on each of my four different lights individually every time I entered and left the shop. So I got some smart plugs, wired them up to Alexa, and now she can turn it on and off. Hey Alexa, shop off. Hey Alexa, chill mode on. This is chill mode. Bunch of cool RGB lights I installed throughout the shop for our birthday party. Look even, like, is that not sick or what? Hey Alexa, chill mode off. Yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. That's it for today, let's get to work. Caleb, what the heck are you doing? Let me explain. Imagine you have a 3D model of a car in a computer program. Now there's three axes in this three-dimensional space. There's the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Imagine the x-axis is down the length of the car, the y-axis is across the width of the car, and the z-axis is the height of the car. Now take that imagery and bring it into real life with the real life eclipse. We have to measure all the suspension points in those three dimensions. How do you measure that? It might seem easy at first. You know, maybe you take a tape measure, go down the length of the car, up the height, and then, you know, down the width. The thing that's difficult is measuring exactly down each plane. If you're not measuring exactly straight down the x-axis, then your measurement's gonna be off. If you're not measuring exactly up the, the z-axis, yet again, your measurement's gonna be off. And so, in order to make it possible for us to easily measure the coordinates in three-dimensional space exactly along each plane, we're gonna build a jig. It's pretty much going to be um, imagine like a ladder. It'll be an exact square with exact right angles. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to explain. Point is that I know what I'm gonna do in my mind and we're just gonna do it. <laughs> but after we build the jig, we're gonna weld it to the bottom of the car, just tack it in, and then we're gonna get our measurements for our suspension hard points. I guess without any further ado, let's start building a jig. Gotta be perfectly level, perfectly square, and yeah, that's about it. Well, the main part of the jig is done. As you can tell, it's, it's really simple. It's just a square. 
that is perfectly straight, perfectly level, perfectly square. Now I'm going to cut some one inch square tubing and weld it in every, I don't know, say 10 centimeters for the first, I don't know, 50 centimeters. That way when we attach it to the car and we're measuring all the points up here, it'll be easy to determine exactly where we are. So it's kind of hard to see, but the jig that we made is under there, as you can see. And the car is actually resting on it just ever so slightly. Shout out to the wooden blocks for holding up the weight of an Eclipse. <laughs> I just wanted to do this so we could see where it touches the chassis. See, right, right there, to see where we're gonna need to grind some paint off to weld. And I also wanted to check to see if it was parallel to the frame rails, which as you can kind of tell, it's not. So we're going to have to make some posts that lowers the rear a little bit. After that, we will grind off the chassis and tack it in place. We're also gonna go ahead and pull out the front coil overs and replace the springs with a piece of PVC that we will cut to the exact same length of the springs while the car was at ride height full weight, pretty much allowing us to jack up the suspension without there being any sort of resistance from the spring. again, I think it's gonna be better than a jigsaw. We'll see, I, I know it's not ideal, but better than a jigsaw. Perfect. One is one millimeter longer. Let's put those in those. The undercoat and paint has been removed. The jig is completely square with the body. So now, I'm gonna weld it to the car. Everything is working beautifully. The jig held on to the chassis. My welds were good. Both sides are at ride height with their PVC springs. This one I put the wheel back on just to kind of, you know, make sure it did look right. And it, that, that looks identical to what it looked like when it was at ride height. So now we can start measuring. Obviously on our three dimensional plane, there's gotta be three origin points. The spot where it's zero for the Y axis, zero for the X axis, and zero for the Z axis. Y axis origin point is halfway in the chassis. So the very middle of the chassis is Y zero. The X origin point is the front of the jig and the origin point for the Z axis is the top of the jig. So ultimately all measurements will be based off of essentially 
this point right here, but underneath. So like right, right, right there. That's the origin point for all the measurements. Now, what actual things do we have to measure? So at ride height, we have to measure the center of rotation for the outer ball joint and the outer tie rod. We also have to measure the center of the piston of travel at the spring perch. That's all we have to do at ride height. Then we have to measure both the outer control arm, one there, one down there. And that obviously doesn't matter at ride height because it's bolted to the chassis. Same thing with the inner tie rod. Center of rotation, we have to measure that. We have to measure the center of the top hat. And then and that's it. We also have to measure wheel center. So pretty much the center of the wheel in the axis of rotation. Oh no! <laughs> I was recording while I went to go use the restroom. <laughs> I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get all these measurements. I'm gonna just kinda wing it and see what works and see what doesn't, but I'm assuming I'm going to use the calipers, some carpenter squares, and a tape measure. Remember, the most important thing is to make sure to measure one plane at a time. So I'll measure down the x-axis, write that number down. Let's do it! But first, let me talk about this video's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a serious home security system made simpler. Simply Safe's website guides you through the process of customizing your system so you get seamless protection that meets the unique needs of your home. They have a huge lineup of sensors to cover every window, room, and door. HD security cameras for inside and out, smart locks, video doorbells, water sensors, the list goes on and on. An awesome thing about Simply Safe is that their system is super easy easy to set up and it takes only like 30 minutes. No need to hire a technician and schedule an appointment, wait for them to show up, etc, etc. Now you guys have seen me install a Simply Safe system at my house, which I love, but with this new shop and all this nice stuff, I needed to get that protected. One of my favorite thing about this Simply Safe system at my shop is the smart lock. Now instead of having to, you know, fumble for my keys with my hands full of my recording equipment and other stuff, I can either use the Simply Safe app or one of their key fobs to just unlock the door with the push of a button from the car. The other awesome things are the outdoor wireless camera. It has an ultra wide 140 degree view, 1080p HD resolution, and even a built in spotlight and color night vision. The interior camera is also awesome. Yet again, great resolution, great field of view, and it's gonna capture a lot of funny moments in the shop. Now, if you guys are interested, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com forward slash gingium to learn more. I'll have a link in the description down below and a huge thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. We've gotten all the measurements that we needed to get while the suspension was at ride height. Now we can go ahead and disassemble the suspension to give us access to the lower control arm mounting bolts and to give us access to the top hat. But uh, overall, everything is going pretty smoothly. The jig has been amazing because I can use all sorts of straight edges mounted to it. It just, just really, really gives me the flexibility to be able to somewhat accurately measure these things. Obviously, they're not gonna be like 100% precise. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, these measurements are a few millimeters off, but they'll be close. And the alignment specs that we got in the last video will help us determine the, the error and stuff like that. Matteo made a chart for me, listing all of the, uh, the measurements I needed to get and how I needed to get them. Yet again, thank you to Matteo.
I got the measurements of every single suspension point besides the top hat. Now getting the top hat measurement accurate is a little tricky because it's so high above the jig. So what I thought to do, take the top hat off the coilover, install the top hat so there's just the little circle in the center, then drop a thing of string down it, then mark where the string hits the jig, and measure that. Now obviously in order for that to work, the car has to be level. So I went ahead, jacked up the rear of the car until it was level because this lift isn't level. Gotta love that. But now let's drop down our string. approximately 62.35 centimeters. And with that, we have all of our measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and send Mateo all these numbers so he can plug them into his suspension simulations. Let's see what he has to say. So, uh, the unexpected result is that we actually have uh, anti-lift in the suspension. Uh, the anti-lift uh, uh, angle is around three degrees. Uh, so depending on the uh, brake bias of the car, that will be some somewhere around 30, low, low 30s, maybe 20% of anti-dive. Anti okay. uh, and uh, considering that the uh, instant center of rotation of the suspension is behind the wheel, this will become pro-lift when applied to a rear suspension. So basically, this uh, geometry will uh, increase the pitch of the rear uh, during braking, which is exactly what we don't want. <laughs> yep, and that's exactly what you predicted too. Yeah, uh, I wasn't sure that there were uh, anti-effects built in the suspension. I was expecting uh, less to almost none. However, as I said before, good, good thing we checked. Uh, so, uh, this is the static uh, uh, anti-lift. Uh, we have a very brief uh, curve, uh, how it goes during the stroke. Positive is compression, negative is extension. Uh, second problem is that I found that the suspension also has a, um, a toe-out uh, bump steer behavior. Whether it compresses or it extends, we are picking up the toe out. The rear suspension will extend more during braking because uh, of the pro, uh, pro lift. But then it will also pick um, toe out. So that is exactly the recipe of disaster we talked before. Yeah, that's the area in the back of the car flying off and out of control. <laughs> yeah, and uh, basically the, the worst thing scenario, no? The worst case scenario, sorry. Yeah. What I would like uh, in, uh, to do is uh, not only to modify a bit the rear suspension, but also the front one. The front, on the front wheel drive car, you rely heavily on having a traction force that straightens the wheel after a corner. So are you essentially saying that the, the car is gonna have less self-steer now that there's no track or like force being applied to the front wheels pretty much? Yes, it will have probably almost no self-steer. I see. Uh, especially when you consider that we have measured such a low caster angle. Well, that's pretty interesting. Oh shoot, the caster couch is out of place. Turns out the Eclipse has more anti-effects than we expected at first. Turns out it has the bad bump steer, the bump steer that gets toe out, and some of the front geometry should be modified now that there's no engine up there. Matteo is gonna go ahead, run some more calculations, run some more simulations, and come up with some ideas as to how to fix some of those issues. Thankfully, most of it's just gonna be as simple as moving points around. We'll get more into the what to do in the next video. The big thing is that now we know what we have to fix. Anyway, we're done with measuring things. No more calculations, no more measurings. We can get into the build. First step, is to strip the car down to a bare, bare chassis.
Well guys, the bottom of the Eclipse is now completely stripped. No subframes, no suspension, no lines, no wiring. Besides this wire right here. No fuel tank. We even got rid of all the small little brackets. There's nothing here. And I gotta say, for being an Illinois car, this thing is incredibly clean. There's one spot of rust, which you guys might have seen. Right there, but um, we'll fix that, cut out the entire you know, section of the frame rail and re-weld it in. Speaking about the frame rails, they are kind of dented, as you can tell, but I've got some ideas to fix that and some ideas to kind of brace it to make the chassis a little bit more rigid. But now that that is done, I'm gonna drop the car down, try to remove the interior, remove all the small things from the engine bay that we don't need, like the power steering cooler, stock intercooler, battery bracket, Kind of all that random crap. Pretty much nothing on this car besides like the front brake lines and the front suspension is staying the same. Gonna have to do new fuel lines, new back brake lines, new wiring, intercooler, power steering, brake, I already said that. It's all gonna have to be changed. And now, I can open my door. The Eclipse is 100% torn down. A big pile of interior parts, a big pile of suspension, engine, miscellaneous parts. Kind of funny how all of this fits into that little car. I removed everything from the interior besides the dash and the carpet. We're only gonna be doing like a three quarters cage in this car, so all that, that can stay. Not going through the effort of removing that. Look at all this room for activities. Just imagine, just chop, chop, chop. The wiring up front is still here. I'm not gonna mess with that quite yet. I'm planning on really just kind of extending that stuff into the back, you know, keeping the factory ECU location, keeping the factory wiring too, I mean, rewrapping it and stuff, but this car's got plug and play ECU options, so no need to rewire it. And that same thing goes with all the interior wiring. That's why I'm keeping all that. So everything is measured, everything is removed. Do you know what that means? It's time to start cutting. In the next video, we're gonna chop a hole in this car and start building the cage, start planning that stuff out, and start really diving deeper into how we're going to fix some of the suspension issues. If you guys are interested, you can watch that video early by going up there, becoming a patron. And yet again, if you guys want to get entered for your chance to win this thing, check out the link in the description down to Power JDM. Every $1 spent on merch or car parts there gets you an entry to win this thing. And yes, I did say car parts. You can buy race car parts for your race car and get entered to win another one. <laughs> hope you guys are excited. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Peace out and goodbye.